Hey, friend, Chris Van Deviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Well, 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 only a few months after the bombshell update of 10.5, the Apple team is already treating us to another major update of 10.6, which was released today. Obviously, this coincides with the release of the new Mac OS, Big Sur, and also the announcement of the new Mac systems that are running on Apple's own processor, which is Apple Silicon. Before we go any further in this walkthrough of 10.6, I highly recommend that you back up your existing logic system just in case you need to backtrack, just in case if 10.6 isn't playing well with your particular Mac system. Apple recommends it, and it's so easy. If we just navigate to the Finder, navigate to the Applications, and then go to Logic Pro 10, just right-click, go to Compress. Your Mac will take a couple of minutes to zip up your Logic Pro file, and then just move that zip to a separate folder. And I would give it the name of the version that you last were using. So in my case, it's 10.5.1. And then if you download 10.6, if it's not working well for you, we'll just throw it right in the trash and then unzip the old version. And then you're good to go. I also recommend turning off automatic updates for your Mac and your iOS devices that are running Logic Remote. And I mention this because this is not just an update of Logic Pro. It's also an update of Logic Remote. That's where a lot of people are going to get the most value of this update. But in case your particular Mac, your iOS devices are not able to upgrade to the OS required for these updates, well, then you're not going to run into any problems of Logic Remote or Logic Pro updating on you because 10.6 requires Catalina or later. And the latest version of Logic Remote requires iOS 14 or later. Now let's head up to help and go right down to what's new in Logic Pro. Now, most of these features we're pretty well aware of. I mean, live loops, the samplers, step sequencer, these were introduced with 10.5. Obviously, the biggest update is that Logic Pro is now optimized for Apple Silicon. And I, for one, am pretty pumped about this. I'm very interested. I'm even looking at the newest Mac Mini right now. The last couple of major updates have been just a wealth of new features, new awesome instruments and plugins. It's been just a bonanza for us Logic users. So it seems with 10.6 that now the Apple team is honing in on more foundational details of the different apps. But for the rest of us who are maybe not ready to upgrade to an Apple Silicon Mac, there are some pretty cool updates for the rest of us. You just have to go digging for them. The biggest one is going to be that Logic Remote now supports the step sequencer. And this is going to be huge for many of us who use the step sequencer for programming different drum beats or melodic instruments. Because now Logic Remote has to be the most complete controller, instrument, live loops launcher, step sequencer that you could possibly get. And one detail before we dig into step sequencer on Logic Remote, I do want to bring your attention. If we go to Logic Pro, go down to control surfaces and setup. And if we install a new controller, we can see right here that all of the Novation launch pads are now fully supported in 10.6. And what's even better is you don't have to rotate the controller anymore to take advantage of the launch pad with live loops. Everything works as you would expect it to. Again, you don't have to rotate them anymore. Cool. So let's navigate to my iPad here where I have the step sequencer loaded up and it looks exactly the same as the step sequencer in Logic. Pretty awesome. We can see all the different rows of the instruments. And if I slide my finger along the different headers on the left-hand side, we can just slide right along, look at all the different elements of this drum kit. We can also collapse the row headers or expand them to introduce a mute and solo for each row. And everything that you would expect in the step sequencer from a drum machine is right here on the iOS device. Thanks to multi-touch, you can just slide your finger right across the notes and boom, we've just introduced a clap on every single 16th note in this grid. We can even audition our beats without any of the other instrumentation in the project. So let's take a listen to just this beat and I'll even plug in some notes as well. I mean, that's pretty sick. We can either work with step on and off or we can adjust the different edit modes. We can go to chance here and we can introduce different degrees of chance on the open hi-hat. So let me just drag down. Also, if you click and hold on a particular edit mode note, just click and hold 
And now the resolution expands so you can get really fine-tuned about what you're affecting. But we can also expand or contract the different automation modes or the different edit modes just by clicking on the disclosure triangle in the row header. By default, you get velocity, you get gate, you get tie, but you can introduce another row just by clicking the plus. So now we've introduced note. And if you click on the title of the edit mode lane, you can switch between the different edit modes. So we can pick skip, or we can get rid of an edit mode lane just by clicking the X. Additionally, if we click on the header of a row, we are introduced to row settings. So we can adjust either the row assignment or the step rate. We can set some of these hi-hats to a 30 second note instead of 16th note or eighth note. So let's audition this right now. Pretty sick. Playback mode, we can switch between forward, reverse, ping pong, or random. And we can also affect the entire beat globally as you could in the step sequencer on the Mac as well. Click on the inspector icon in the bottom left-hand corner and we can adjust the pattern length. So we can reduce this down to 16th notes if we want or bump it up to 32nd notes. So now we can see two pages of this beat. Adjust the playback mode for the entire beat. Adjust the swing, pattern key, or scale quantize. And you can add different drum elements as well just by going to the bottom, clicking on the plus symbol here, and introducing kit pieces or automation. Now I've already introduced all of these kit pieces. We can take a look at automation. And look at that, MIDI control, different aspects of the smart controls, enveloper, I mean, this is awesome. This is the most complete idea of a controller for Logic that you can't get anywhere else. I mean, truly, you cannot get anywhere else. If we take a look right here, we get smart controls and drum pads, drum pads, live loops, step sequencer, mixer, key commands. If I switch to a different instrument, we get chord strips, the smart controls with the keyboard. I mean, it is amazing. But what if you don't use step sequencer in your day to day? Is there anything else for other Logic users to upgrade to 10.6? Again, it's all about digging into the weeds of 10.6. So for example, I'm gonna select this track, open the library, and we have a brand new keyboard selection of sounds for you to use and pick different patches from. Many of these sounds existed already within Sampler, within the Retro Synth, but there are some new patches as well, and just further rounds out the library for Logic users. This gives us more and more inspirational sounds to play with for our own productions. In fact, I created a riff just based on some of these new additions using Step Sequencer on the iPad, some of the keyboard sounds. Let's just take a quick listen. I mean, it's just increasing the amount of fun, the amount of inspiration within Logic Pro as a musical tool, as a musical instrument itself. I'm still searching and poking through the update myself, but some of the things that I've come across that I thought were pretty interesting, again, if we go to the library, we have the keyboard section. If we take a look at the vintage clav section, it's been expanded. So there's more patches available in that territory as well. If we head over to the live loop section, and let's just introduce both, and I'll drag in a couple of these into live loops. And just like that, we can zoom in now using the magnifying tool. So I'm using control option to introduce it, but you could use key command T, hold command for the zoom tool. And now when I hold command, I can zoom right in. This is so much better in my opinion than having to hold command and expand and contract using the arrow keys. I, I wasn't a huge fan of that and I missed the magnifying tool. If we go into the preferences under Logic Pro, preferences under display, and go into the tracks tab, we now have a preference specific for region colors under appearance. And this I'm pretty pumped about. So in its default state, as we've always known it, under individual, let's just copy and paste this region right down here. So even though our track color is a brown color, the region stays green. And I was never a huge fan of that. You had to select the different regions, go up to functions, go down to color the regions by the track color. And I don't know, it just seemed like excess work for no reason. But now if we set region color as track color, look at that. Now the different regions follow the track color. 
So no longer do we have to specify the region colors to follow the track colors or vice versa. You just set one and forget it. It's awesome. Additionally, if we drag and drop into the hot zones in the track headers, so just like that, we now have a new sampler zone per note, which is really helpful and handy because opening the sampler now, if I drag and drop one of these regions in here, right in the upper section here, we have a couple different options of zone per file, split at silence, zone per file, zone per note, and you had to pick within the sampler. And if we take a look in the templates, so I'm going to go to file, I'm going to go new from template, close this down, don't save. And under the new tutorial section right here, we now have a drum machine designer specific tutorial. When 10.5 was first introduced, we had a live loops, quick sampler, step sequencer. And I think these are fantastic. I think these are great ideas to help users get accustomed to these new tools. And it's great that there's now a drum machine designer specific tutorial. Opening it up, and we'll just take a quick look at what's going on here. We can see there are track notes. And as you work your way down the tutorial, they update to help you get acquainted with the Drum Machine Designer updates. One thing I do want to point out that caught me by surprise when I noticed that it was gone was that the media browser appears to have disappeared. We have our project file browser. We have the all file browser. But what happened to the media browser where you were able to pick out different songs from iTunes or movie clips? I'm hoping that there's going to be an update in the near future to replace the media browser because I actually used it quite a bit. It kind of makes me sad to see it gone. And even if you go to file, go down to share, we can't share a song to the media browser anymore. So that's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm curious why that is. Again, I'm learning about this update just as you are. But the big, big features is that Logic Pro has been optimized for silicon. The step sequencer is now fully available to you within Logic Remote on iOS. Drag and drop functionality has only grown for you to use with a sampler. Novation launch pads don't have to be rotated anymore for live loops. And all current Novation launch pads are supported with 10.6. An added keyboard section within the library for a whole slew of keyboard patches. And little details around logic, such as the preferences for region colors, the new drum kit designer tutorial template. Live loops can now use the magnifying tool for expanding and contracting the view. And I forgot to mention that the different menus have slightly adjusted as well around Logic. They're not just a hard black anymore. And if we open a plugin menu, such as the compressor, and go into the plugin settings, you can see slight adjustments in terms of visuals around Logic. Overall, I am super pleased. I'm stoked to see the Apple team continuing to push this program forward and making it what I believe to be truly the best app for creating, for mixing, for producing music. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week, I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow.